Hey, welcome to this tutorial and today we're making a cookie notice inside of Webflow. And I've seen this request a lot in the Webflow community on how to do this. So I decided to make a video on showing you how to do it step by step. And as always, I'm also sharing in the description below a clonable project so you can clone this particular project and have it immediately in your Webflow account without anything else to do. So if you want to do that to follow along with this tutorial, you can do that as well. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the tutorial. So what I did is I already added two sections with two headings so we can see how the cookie works. And so what I'll first do is I will style the cookie. So the first thing I have to do is to create a div block that I will set on its own and I'm going to call that cookie. I'm going to add a padding of eight pixels on top, eight pixels on the bottom, 24 pixels right and 24 pixels on the left side and I'm going to set its position to fixed. This is important. And so it's, you know, it's fixed on the window. And what I need to do now is I will set its left side to 20 pixels and its bottom to 20 pixels. So we'll stay on the bottom left corner. And I'm going to add a background color of black and I'm going to set a radius of five pixel. Now what I will do is I will set its layout to display flex center, center, and horizontal. Now what I will do is I will drag an image inside of it. Take an image inside of the cookie. And I will select the cookie that I already uploaded. I'll set the width to 30 pixels. Now what I will do is add a paragraph. So where's the paragraph? So the paragraph will just have the uh, bit of content to explain what this is. So I will set that to P, I remove the margin on the bottom. I will set this to system UI for the font, set that to white. And so this website uses cookies, learn more. And the learn more needs to be a link to the privacy policy. So what you would do is you would take this link and link it to the privacy policy right here. But here I see that there is no space. So I'm going to add some space to the image. So I'm going to give that a class image and 10 pixels. So what I need now in this cookie model is to add a close button inside of it. So I'm gonna do that. I'm going to insert a div block that will sit right next to the learn more. And I will call this close button, close slash button. It's width is going to be 40 pixels, height 40 pixels, display flex align center, justify center, and then its position, I'm going to set that to relative. Forgot to mention one thing though. So this cookie notice, you want it to be on top of everything else. So you need to place the Z index as high, higher than any other elements that you have inside of the page. So what you would do is you would set that to, let's say 999. So in your own project, if you have a, an element that has a Z index higher than 999, you would need to bump this cookie notice higher than 999. But for this particular example, it's gonna work. And I'm going to go back to close button, add a left margin of 10 pixels. And now I will create the cross. So for that, I need a div block that I will put inside of the close button. And I'm going to call that line. I'll set a width of 15 pixels and a height of two pixels. The position is going to be absolute and I will set a background color of white, but I also set a radius of 20 pixels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. So command C, command V on Mac. And now I will just rotate it. So the line one here, I will call that rotate 45. And because I'm going to rotate that by 45 degrees, so on the Z, you're going to rotate that at 45 and you're going to go to the second one and I'm going to call that rotate dash min 45 because I'm going to rotate it in the other way. So 3D rotate minus 45 degrees. So now you see the cross, right? So the design is pretty much ready. What I need to do now is to create the interactions for it to work properly. So let's do that. So what I want to do is to add a over interaction as you move as you hover in the cross, I want it to move. So what I'm going to do is I will select close button. I'm going to go to interaction plan panel, element trigger, mouse hover, create a new animation. So I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to call that hover 
uh, no close button cookie over in and I'm going to take uh, the two lines so what I'm going to do is I will take this uh, line and I'm going to rotate it at its initial state and the line one initial state is rotated by 45 degrees I'm going to set that there and I'm going to take the second line and I'm going to rotate it also by minus 45 degrees which is the initial state so now what I will do is I will select the two right click then duplicate and now I will set the interaction so I want to rotate it to zero degrees so get back to this horizontal line zero and for the two I want the duration of 0 0.3 and set that to ease what I will do now is on the other out I will start an animation I just duplicate it and I will call that over out the these two are not necessary the initial state are not necessary you can delete them and we just want to play with the animation of the other out so what i want is i want it to get back into its initial state which was rotated by 45 degrees so line one which is this one i want to rotate it by 45 degrees and line two which is below i'm going to set that to minus 45 degrees and set the duration to ease uh, duration to 0 0.3 and to ease so let's see how this works. So as I'm moving in, the cross closes. As I'm moving out, the cross comes back to its initial state. So this is done. But now I need to make one change because as you can see, my, my cursor is not a hand. And I want this to be a hand to signify that you can actually click on this. So what I will do is I will go to close button, scroll all the way down here. And as you see cursor, you're going to click on that and you're going to set that to pointer. And now if I go back there, it turns into a hand so it signifies you can click on it so what i want to do now is i want to create an interaction once you click on this close button the cookie notice will disappear so let's do that so we select the close button we go back to interaction panel element trigger we're going to go on mouse click so on first click start an animation click on a plus and let's call that close button close cookie click so what I will do now is I will take this cookie div and I will move it on click. So what I will move is first I will affect the class, class cookie, all elements with this class. And I will move it by 200%. Set this duration to 0 0.5 and set that to ease. So let's see first how this works. So I'm overing in, I click, this disappears. Great. But I want a bit more interaction. So what I will do is I will go to the cookie and I will add an opacity interaction. So on click, I want the opacity to go to zero and I will set that to ease again. Let's see. Click on that. Yeah, much better. And finally, what I will do is I will take this cookie and after all of this, I will set this to hide. So it's gonna hide it. Good. So on click now, this is done. So we've set up an interaction then on hover. So I over over the cross, it just moves ni quite nicely. If I click on the cross, it disappears, which is very cool. So what I want now is as the page load, I want to fade in interaction. So let's set this up. So on page trigger, now I will do that. You go to page load and you start a new animation, which we're going to call cookie load. So what I will do is I select the cookie, I will go to move, and I will initially move the cookie notice by 200% on its initial state. Also, what I will do is I will set its opacity to 0%. I, don't, I want to add the class, and I want this to be the class as well. So what I will do now is I will create the fade in, right? So I'm going to go to the move, that I want as page load, 0 0.5. I want, it, I want you to move to 0%. So to your initial state that we designed. And now I want the opacity to be 100%. And we set that to ease. So let's see how this works. As the page loads in, the cookie appears. Nice. And if I over, I click, it disappears. 
It's a bit too slow for my taste, so I'm going to move that a bit faster. So I'm going to go back to the move and set the this to 0 0.3 and set that to E. So let's see how this works now. Yeah, much better. Loads in quite nicely and it disappears on click. So what I will do now is I will publish it. So let's publish to see how this works. Okay. Cookie loads in, I close this, works. Now there is one problem if because Every time I refresh a page, this cookie will appear, right? And we don't want that. So what I need to do to fix that is I need to add a script that I will share with you in the description below. So what you need to do, you will just copy the script that looks like this. You will just copy everything, just copy it. And then you will go to this, you would go to project settings and you will go to custom code to the footer code and we we'll just paste that here. So with this code, you only need to pay attention to three things. The first thing to pay attention to is this class here, dot cookie. You need to change that to the name of the div class that you gave it on uh, this cookie model, right? On this div block. So if you called this div block cookie dash whatever, like cookie dash, let's call it model, I would need to take this name and I would need to change in the code, I would need to change it to cookie dash model. The second thing you need to pay attention to is the dash close, uh, the dot close dash button. What this says is that once the person clicks on this div block, it's going to set a cookie inside the browser of the person that will expire in 14 days. And again, pay attention to this class. This class needs to be exactly the same thing as the class that you see here for the close button, right? So if you change that, you need to change that as well and the cookie is going to expire in 14 days. So if you want to change the expiration of the cookie from let's say 14 to only seven days or even more, all you have to do is to change that to 20 days and the cookie will expire in 20 days. So, so let's see how this works. I'm going to save the changes and I'm going to publish it once again. So let's see how this works. So as you can see on the website load, the cookie loads in. And if I close this now and I reload the page, you can see that the cookie doesn't appear anymore. So if you want to see how this works, what you can do on Google Chrome is to click on this little icon. You will see cookies. You click on cookies and you will see your cookie and you will go to cookies, open this and you will see cookie closed. And this is the script that we just added. So at the date of this recording, we're just July 15th and it's going to expire August 4th. So as an example, I'm going to delete this cookie. So all I do is click on remove and I'm just going to refresh the page and you can see that the cookie loads once again. I close this, I refresh, it doesn't show up anymore. So that's pretty much it. That's how you create a cookie notice for GDPR purposes inside of Webflow. So if you would like to see more Webflow tutorials in the future, I invite you to subscribe to my channel because I post Webflow tutorials every single week. In the meantime, I will see you guys soon. See you.